Well, everybody, you can be seated. Good to see you tonight. Um, hey, I'm going to ask a, a favor, if you don't mind. It's, it's kind of odd uh, to be talking to everybody way all over everywhere. You can still maintain six foot and be in these two center sections. It'd be nice. COVIDly comfortable. So I want to take a minute. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot stirring in the nation today. And so I kind of want to hear what I have to say before we pray, because I think it's more important to be led by the Spirit than to be led by human opinion. And uh, we can take a time to pray. Um, so just want to say, uh, just give you an update. Of course, we're launching into a new year. And uh, excited about that. So we are discussing plans to re-engage uh, some uh, small groups and home groups and stuff like that. Uh, should be seeing those things evolve in the next month or two. I just want to make sure I got the T's crossed and I's dotted and that sort of thing. So we do have progress moving in those directions. Uh, and just to say, hey, everybody online, how are you? You see me smiling? I can't see you. But uh, I know you're out there. Um, so anyway, we want to make sure, you know, that we're hearing from God. Because the worst thing you can do is just start a bunch of stuff. And then you can't keep up with it. And so part of what's happened in the past four months for me is you assess. You've got to see what you have manpower for. Because you can't do everything because people are at home still because of COVID and stuff. And so... While you might like to see something happen, the question is, do you have people to make it happen? So we have to assess, and then we prioritize those things that, you know, based on life, experience, what the Holy Spirit's saying. Let's do that one and that one, get it moving forward. Then we'll add as we go. So it's a little more progressive. So I think that would make sense to everybody, that uh, you can only do what, you can only work with what you have to work with at any given moment. And you don't want to overtax that because then they'll get tired too. So you want to make sure you're making good decisions. So that's what we're attempting to do. Um, all right, um, I'm going to get started. And we're just going to teach a little bit. Uh, Brian is not here tonight. His son is in town. Uh, he's in the Marines and is leaving Friday. So they wanted the opportunity to get to spend some time with him. So you got to appreciate that. So. Uh, I don't know if they're watching. Hi, Brian. Hi, Jamie. And uh, so that's why they're not here. So it's service is a little bit different. It did not mean the Holy Spirit didn't show up. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about, and they'll get my PowerPoint up, the Holy Spirit and worship. And so probably a little bit different uh, maybe than what you've heard before. But have you ever been in a situation where the way God was being worshipped made you feel uncomfortable? You ever been in one of those kind of situations? People were worshipping and it was just different. And it made you feel uncomfortable and you may even said, I don't know if that's really God or not. You ever seen those kind of situations? And, but the more you watched it, even though it was something that made you uncomfortable and you were struggling with whether you could agree with it or not, you saw something was real in those people. And you couldn't deny the reality of them connecting with God even though you couldn't connect that way. And so, you know, the Lord is very, very diverse. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit work, he works with differences and diversities. So we want to be quick. We don't want to be quick to say something's not real, but we want to be cautious to put our stamp of approval on everything at the same time. So... You know what you could do. You could make a decision, and you could imitate what they're doing, but that didn't mean your heart connected to God when you did it. And so you don't want to just copy the way things are done because it's supposed to be a big deal for them. And you'd think, I'm just not where they are right now. I don't know how to connect with God that way. And, of course, the Holy Spirit says, uh, I, I know how to connect with God. Maybe you just follow me. That the Holy Spirit is the one that can take us to God 
and however he wants to, and he can get us past barriers that we may have in our lives. And that's the big question, isn't it, that I'm asking that. Are we still teachable? Can we still let him take us places we haven't gone with him before? Can we let him be the boss, or do we need to make that decision for him? Can we let God be God? Is a big question. Because I know that the Holy Spirit leads us progressively through life. That he builds from one thing to another, and that his goal is for us to continue all the days of our lives growing and developing more like Jesus. And I found myself in a, a situation today where I realized after a decision or two that I was making internally that it really didn't look a lot like Jesus. So I'm still growing. That little song's coming. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. <laughs> you remember that little song? It took him just a moment to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars, but he's still working on me. <laughs> So it's one of those kind of things that uh, to think that we have arrived with God is really an arrogancy that should never enter into any of us because the thinking that we have arrived then becomes self-limiting to what God would really like to bring into our lives. In other words, we can put a lid on it if we're not careful. The Bible calls it quenching the spirit. So here's the real truth that we have to wrestle with. This is the truth. You know it's the truth. There are always obstacles and hindrances to going deeper with God. There's always going to be something that will stand in the way of you going to the place where God ultimately wants you to go away. And those things have different sounding voices for different kinds of people. Like, I'm not doing that because people would think I'm weird. And it becomes a barrier. Or, I, you know, that's just being too emotional. Now it becomes a barrier. Or that's just the flesh. So now we've got that barrier. And it could be. That's why I'm saying those things start to work. Anything that could prevent us from completely abandoning ourselves totally into the hands of God, then becomes a barrier, whatever that would be. And I can promise you one thing for sure. If there's something between us and God, it's not on his end of the deal. It's on our end. It would be something that's in that relationship that's not from him. And I call it the invisible barrier of worship. It's an invisible barrier. And this thing shows up occasionally in life as we're going that where we hit a barrier. I could probably ask John to come up here and describe this. He'd tell it better because runners say they hit the wall. That somehow at some place in the race, some phys the, physically they're drained, emotionally it takes a toil, especially on long runs, and at that moment, they're not doing it like they were doing it. And something changed. And he could tell it far more detail what those things are. But they hit the wall. And we say those kind of things in life that when we're not performing like we were, we say we hit the wall. In other words, that some kind of obstacle or problem comes up that hinders or stops us from progressing on from there. So there are those type of things that can happen where we hit the wall. But uh, God doesn't have a wall. He tears every barrier down. In fact, the, the barrier is invisible to him because what he's done in Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit stops all of that. So... I want to talk about that a little bit, but I want us to realize that nothing can keep us from God other than our own beliefs. That's the only thing. So how about this scripture? Remember what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 38? 
He said, I'm persuaded that death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus Christ our Lord provided a salvation for us that none of those things can prevent us from getting to God. Whatever you toted in here with you tonight, whether it's good, bad, ugly, hard day, mean words that somebody, they cannot prevent you from a full-blown worship and an encounter and a relationship with God. Nothing can separate that from you except you. You can choose to focus on that and not get to where God wants you to go. So theoretically, to God, the barrier is invisible. It doesn't exist. But we hit the wall sometimes because of our personal experience and our posturing and our understanding of things, and we'll focus on those things rather than God, and we hit the wall. And those then take ascendancy over our thinking in that moment, and oh, I just don't feel like worshiping God. Everybody okay? Y'all kind of quiet tonight. So... There's all kinds of things that separate people from God. There's religious barriers. They're the way they've been taught growing up in church can come become barriers for some people. You know, we've had all kinds of barriers in the church over here. We've had clothing barriers, right? Because once upon a time in the church, ladies couldn't put on makeup. Ladies couldn't cut their hair. They had to wear long dresses. They couldn't wear a pair of slacks. And over the years, those things altered. People said you couldn't wear a pair of jeans because that's men's clothing, right? And I always looked at women's jeans and said, I'm not wearing those. <laughs> those don't look like men's clothing to me. So, But those, there's been those kind of barriers that we've had to find our way through over the years. And cultural barriers. I mean, all you got to do is go from one country to another and you see the differences that exist. And different belief systems work different ways in different countries and different environments. And in the state of Texas, you go to four corners of Texas and it's a different culture in every part of Texas. You got rednecks in one part and, you know, the further south we get, we got huge Hispanic populations. Houston is an area where we have people that have come in from all the world. It's a mixing pot and you can get hung up on barriers of different cultural diversity. Myself, I pray to cross the barrier because I'm going to eat food from every culture. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's moonwalk right now, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. But there's also sin-generated barriers because sin and the focus on sin, it separates us from God. Sin pays the wages of death. That sin makes things die relationally with God. And then those kind of things, even though the barrier is not with God because he sent the answer through the Lord Jesus Christ, but we can allow those kind of things to create a barrier between us and God. So my point is not to talk about all the barriers, but just to acknowledge that there are barriers that come up in people's lives that will prevent them from moving away towards God, they'll actually back away from God at times instead of moving to the Lord while the barrier is in front of them and facing the situation and let God take them on through to what it is that he has. And worship is one of those places where we get to do that and the Holy Spirit is here to guide us straight to the Lord in situations. So all these barriers, what they do is they create an automatic veto power in our memory circuits. Nuh-uh, not me, not that, no, no, no. Everybody understand that no is the language of the law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. The law was exceptionally good at telling you what not to do. It was exceptionally good at pointing out what was wrong. And it was righteous, and it was holy, and it was given by God, and its purpose was to tell you what you ought not to do. It just couldn't empower you to do the right thing. So then Jesus comes, and he brings a new law called the law of the Spirit. 
of life in Christ Jesus has made me free of the law of sin and death. So the higher law of the Spirit got us through the barrier that wasn't allowing us to move forward. Ah, is everybody okay? Do you know you cannot correct your way into the kingdom? You can't. And, and I, I, I'm not talking about not taking responsibility for life, but no doesn't necessarily take you into the kingdom. In fact, the law tended to condemn, condemn sin. It tends to put the person under a, law, a load, but the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus brings life, and through life you oversee you supersede the death. And I always do this with people. I say, all right, everybody, let's do it. Look at me. Don't look at, don't, no. now look. Don't look over there. Now, see, you're straining not to because you wanted to the minute I said don't. It causes sin to come alive. The don't points out sin, and that was its purpose. The don't didn't take the want to out of you. <laughs> And so God, even though the law is righteous, he brings the law of the spirit of life, and that helps us overcome the barrier. And we'll see some of the things that the Holy Spirit does to help us flow in that kind of capacity. So we don't live by automatic veto power all the time. Instead, we look for the possibilities that Jesus brings, the one who makes ways where there seems to be no way. So God is spirit, right? And they that worship him must and shall worship in spirit and in truth. You just can't worship if it's not by the spirit. They must worship in spirit and in truth. How many of you know that worship is different than praise? In praise, you can choose to do it. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It's a choice that I make. Worship, on the other hand, is a working of the Spirit inside of someone. And his name is Holy Spirit, and his work in our lives is immense. Can I remind us a few things? He is part of the triune Godhead. It is not a feeling. He is not a feeling floating in the room. He is a person. He is not an it. He is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is God. He's the third person in that Godhead. He, according to the book of Acts, is the promise of the Father. It's what the Father promised us. He takes up in residence within us, and we are called the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm never without him. He lives inside of my life. Through him, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. The very fact that he's in here, he is spreading the love of God inside of our lives. His spirit in our spirit has a constant cry. It sounds like this. Abba, Father! He cries by the Spirit to our Father inside of us, our spirit, connecting and communing with the Lord. The New Testament worship is different than the Old Testament worship because the New Testament worship is Christ-theological in nature. It focuses on Christ and the redeeming work of Christ as the one who brought us unto the Father when we couldn't get there on our own. It's different than Old Testament worship because Old Testament worship was based on ritual and many sacrifices. New Testament worship is based on the shed blood of Jesus once and for all, for all mankind. He is the door, and he's opened the door wide through his death, burial, and resurrection. Old Testament worship tended to be given more to selective type people and leaders and that sort of thing, but in the New Testament, Everybody gets to be a priest unto God. Everybody gets to be a worshiper of the Lord and have that open to them. And this transformation that we had 
when we were born into this world, the Bible said we were children of darkness and that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Dead to God, not alive unto God. And Psalms 115, 17 says, The dead praise not the Lord <laughs> because there's no relationship. It's dead. But when he comes in us and he cries, Abba, Father, then the opening of a relationship with God and worship just starts to flow. But he's not through there because he wants the Holy Spirit to enhance our lives and worship anymore. So he offers us this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's another work of God. And as it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus from finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So here's just, I just want to point out something very simple. That even though they had already believed, there was something more for the Spirit for them that they had not received and didn't even know it existed. And so that's another thing, and that's why we preach a separate baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you get the Holy Spirit when you're saved? Well, of course you do. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. But there is that subsequent experience that is an empowerment that we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so they go on to say, and when they heard this, and when they heard that was available to them, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied, and there were about 12 men in all. So in that moment, the Spirit enhanced life for them. That's the big word about breaking barriers is an enhancement that comes from God, always keeps the door open to the Lord, so we don't have to allow barriers in any circumstances to prevent us from getting to the Lord. And so this additional experience, even though they had come to faith, it opened up even more. Later, Paul writes this same church, and he says to them, keep the door open. Let the Spirit of God work. And he goes on to say, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. And I believe that. I believe that's the Holy Spirit. I believe inside of me there's a song from the Lord right now. I believe there's a melody of God that exists inside of me, that in moments of deep sadness or tragedy, there's a song of the Lord that is resident by the Spirit within me, and that Him coming simply by singing at times unto the Lord in situations, my spirit is connected to the work of the Holy Spirit inside of me that is a song of the Lord and a song of victory. There, there's something inside of me that in the midst of difficulty, I can just go, I love you, Lord. Something happens in my spirit that's settling. That when a nation goes crazy, I can attack it. But maybe I attack it. I love you, Lord. Let your kingdom come. I'm not looking for the kingdom of men. Let your kingdom come. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All that is within me. You know what's all in me? That song, that melody, that spirit of God. He lives here. He resides here. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I want my mind to be renewed with the knowledge of God so I'm not making my decisions based on the wisdom of men that lead to naught. When this thing shakes down, the Bible says, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And that's a different government, ladies and gentlemen. It's a different one. Not of this world. It's not born of this world. It's born of from the heart of God. And so in that moment, I'm not drunken with the things that this world throws at me because that's not my drink. My real drink 
is that spiritual drink from the fountain that never runs dry. It's that blood that flows from Emmanuel's vein that's accentuated in my life by the Spirit of God. And that song is waiting for me to be sung. It's the song of Moses. It's the song of the Lamb. It's the song of redemption that's existed in Old Testament and New Testament and carries clear in the future. And that's what the Scripture says in Revelation. They sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great, great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord, and just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only are holy. I, I can worship now. <laughs> I can say that, and I am focused in on him. So there's a song in you today, right now, tonight, waiting to be sung. It exists no matter how tough life is. The song is there, and there's no barrier that can stop it except you and me. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit also causes fruit to come to, well, I'm, I think I missed something. Yeah, I did. It also causes us to bear fruit in our life. And so, yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance. Against such, there's no law. Wow. That's potent stuff right there. There's no law against this. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. It comes from a work of the Spirit in our lives. And, you know, the divine nature of God, the Holy Spirit, we're partakers now of divine nature, and it will deal with this thing called the carnal nature. Because he's holy, things that are unholy get uncomfortable with his holiness. And he deals with that carnalness that could be in any one of us. That would be a barrier or the thing that could drag us to defeat by the Holy Spirit dealing with us. And I'm choosing to worship him to let his spirit release even when I'm struggling so that he can do a work of the spirit that I cannot do. And so you want the spirit of God working in your life in the fullness. And Paul was telling them that don't walk in the spirit. No, he, he was saying walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. They'll get dealt with. And he won't let those have... You know, he won't let you get away without talking to you about that. So you don't go down that road and that slippery slope. So freedom from the works of the flesh can actually come to us as we're going deeper with the Lord and pushing past those barriers and taking it like it is and saying, God, I got this mess right here, but I'm, bless the Lord. <laughs> come on. Let him do what he needs to do. Worship releases the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, Maybe this guy that had been struggling with his unloving nature gets loving because the Spirit's working. Maybe inner turmoil gets replaced with peace that passes understanding. Maybe I see this and I'm troubled. There's this King of glory. There's the Holy Spirit, the third person of God, full of power that's working peace into this situation. You know where his body, right? You know where his body. You know what we're supposed to do, right? Extend the kingdom of God. That's it. Extend the kingdom of God. The mission hadn't changed under any circumstances. So I want to keep worshiping the Lord. I cannot let life rob me of my worship because the Holy Spirit enhances that and releases so much more. And all of a sudden, gentleness can override harshness. The Holy Spirit starts to grow up the fruit of the Spirit in our life. It's germinated. It starts to produce. And as we worship, it's like miracle grow, amen, on our spirit. And God grows. And then, of course, he releases the gifts of the Spirit. And there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There's differences of administrations or the way it's done. And the same Lord, and there are different diversities of operations, but it is the same God that works all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. So you have a manifestation of the Spirit in you, 
sitting there right now that's profitable for all of us. We, it has to be released. We cannot allow barriers to prevent us from letting the manifestation come as he chooses because it's a manifestation of the Spirit, not a manifestation of our flesh or of us. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing of what starts to happen. And then he describes it. He goes, okay, so here's what it looks like. To one is given a word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another diverse tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. So in our work of the Spirit in our life, there's three big categories of gifts. There are revelation gifts where God reveals things to us so we can know them, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirit. All those are giving us supernatural wisdom that didn't come from us where God helps us to see things differently than we could ever see them on our own. There's a lot to talk about there. We can't do it tonight. Then there's power gifts where the power of God can work through us through a gift of faith, healings, are the workings of miracle. These are works of the Spirit that go through our lives. They are not our gifts. They are gifts of the Spirit that He has chosen to work through us with. And then there's utterance or speaking gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, so that at times we supernaturally speak. And it just seems to hit a target that we didn't know was going on at all. And it just sounded like everyday language in that moment to you. You're given a prophetic word. And, and it just happened. You know, it's crazy the number of people that have come up and said, you said this and God said this to me when you said that. And so we want to make sure that that's why in the church service we want room for those kind of things. But we want room for them out in the world. You know God give a word of prophecy down at Costco? Can he do that? Yes, she knows because she's given them down at Costco. She works there. God can give a word anywhere, anytime, any place. And so there's categories of gift. So I'm talking about how worship linked with the Holy Spirit has all these marvelous enhancements and benefits and the Spirit of God works through those who are yielded to Him and don't allow barriers to come between them and God. Even prayer gets enhanced by the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And the Spirit of God prays through us. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to pray. I pray in the Spirit. He knows exactly what to pray. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. What's the conclusion then? I'll pray with the Spirit. I'll also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. It's not an either-or church. You get to do both, and that's what I love about it. So literally, our prayer can be enhanced, and I'm having a hard time praying. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. Worship gets enhanced, for we're the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Jesus. Don't have confidence in the flesh. Have confidence in the work of the Spirit in your life. The lordship of Jesus is enhanced by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit calls Jesus a curse. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I can tell you this. If the Holy Spirit is speaking during our times of praise and worship and the Holy Spirit's talking, Jesus is going to be Lord there. You're not going to see some dude being Lord. You're not going to see some showboat being Lord, it's going to be very apparent that Jesus is the Lord in the situation. And that's what we want. We want him more than anything else. Even preaching can get enhanced by the Holy Spirit. To that I say, thank God. I've always been delighted to know that God spoke through a donkey, so that gave me hope. Amen. And my speech and my preaching was not with the persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So preaching can literally be enhanced. And by the way, just so we'll know, some of the most powerful preaching I ever saw 
was from some of the least energetic people. That it doesn't mean it's anointed preaching just because you can amp your voice up a little bit and get excited. I like that. And that can really be preaching. And that can really be the anointing. But this can also be the anointing too. Jesus told the devil to come out of him. Just how he said it, just the spirit. Work through that situation. But we can have barriers and say, no, that's the anointing, but that's not. And we'll literally close off a component of what God could bring us because we stylized and created a barrier. So I was one of those guys when I was at school. I got a notepad, and I took notes of everybody that come. And if those guys were boring me to death, I took notes because I didn't know. I'm not that smart to know when God was going to give me something that later on was, oh, I remember, that was what that was for. And so it enhances preaching as long as it's by the Spirit. And so not only that, the Spirit confirms the Word with signs following, right? So that enhances preaching. Even the reading and use of Scripture is enhanced by the Holy Spirit. And the Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 3, and we have such trust through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being of ourselves, but our efficient sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter kills, the Spirit gives life. How many of you know you can use the Word of God in such a way that you can stab people to death with it? But that Word combined with the moving of the Spirit like it was in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, when God said and the Spirit moved over the face of the deep, that combination caused life and miraculous power to be released. The Spirit gives life. We want a place for that. And so it creates sufficiency in us as ministers of the Lord. And so all this work of the Spirit and all these enhancements, I wanted to tell them to you because I know at times we experience barriers in our lives. And we think we can't get past them. But everything that I just said is the supply line of the relationship through the Holy Spirit that will move you through any obstacle or barrier that ever tries to come against you. And besides that, I like this one, the Holy Spirit prevents worship from becoming stereotyped, dull, and boring. The wind blows where it wishes. Basically, that means the Spirit of God does what He wants to. And you can hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. That tells me that the Lord wants me to remember that I don't know everything. I don't even know where he comes or where he goes sometimes. But I can know when he's there because I can hear it. And I would have wrote, if it was me, you could feel it because you feel wind. But he didn't say that. So this moving of the Holy Spirit must be more than something you just feel. It must be something you hear. And that we that are born of the Spirit have the opportunity of Him to show up at any time in any place. And all I want to do is open the window so He can blow in when He wants to. And so He's always fresh, everybody. His mercies are new every morning. He blows when and how He wants. We just need to open the windows. So we don't want to try to make him move. We don't have to. We just want to be available and yielded to him. We don't want to copy the way other people do it. Or how we did it last week was real good. Let's do what we did last week. Well, you, you may not want to do it like that. It can lose its freshness. It can become the same old, same old. We stay open, aware. We listen 
we can hear the sound. We follow nudges that come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has perspectives. He has ideas. He knows the will of the Father. And we need to treat him as a person and welcome him. Every time we get together, he's not a mystical, invisible feeling. We welcome him because there's no barrier. And he's here right now. Right now. So I'm going to ask us to pray here in just a minute. But before I do, I'd like to invite Tundi and his special guest to come up here with me. Now, I don't think it's proper for me to do this. I think it's proper for you to do this. So come over here, stand in the middle, look at everybody. And I do, at one point, with social distancing, want you to drop that mask because we want to see how pretty she is. So, Tundi, who is this? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, this is Ronke. He's my... Um, Okay, I think you can all help me, Pastor Mike. <laughs> You're on your own, buddy. Okay, she's my, <laughs> she's my special half. And um, I think I'll introduce her to uh, a few people here. And uh, we met Pastor a few weeks back. And I, um, we told him we were going to be getting married in April. That's on April 10. <laughs> and, um, and Pastor wants us to come and let the church know. I just heard from him that he wants me to do it by myself. <laughs> so please pray for us. We're going to be going back to Nigeria. She, um, she's American. Um, she's a doctor, but she works in Nigeria. Um, she's a neurosurgeon. And um, is going to be coming back with me um, fully when uh, we get married on April 10th. So please pray for us. Um, she's a wonderful woman. Um, I remember that... Um, I was seated just around where I normally sit on um, January 19, 2020. And Pastor Sam was speaking from Abakuk. And he was speaking about extravagant love um, is a gift uh, from God. And I was taking notes. And then he started singing a song. And... Um, it's a song that my family likes, and I started crying um, because I was experiencing a loss. Uh, the person I used to sing it with wasn't here anymore. And the Lord gave me a word um, from another passage in Habakkuk. Just as I was sat there, I was crying, and he said, The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. And in this place, I will give my peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. And just... Um, I think that was January 29, I think. And a week later, I got a message from the wife of a friend, who is her friend, and said, okay, today I think it's more than six months, and um, I've been thinking about you and praying for you. She's a Christian lady. I have a friend when we were back in medical school, and I want to introduce you to her. And okay, so this is that friend. It's um, <laughs> almost a year now. Um, it took us until August this year, um, later in August, early September, to finally agree we were going to go on this journey. She's a woman of God. She's, um, she wanted to take her time to really pray. But um, early September, she told me Amen. that, okay, I will um, marry you. So thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So don't run off yet. Did he say you're a neurosurgeon? You know, I had a brain tumor that was removed. Do you see any kind of residue or any weird sign? Just thought I'd check right quick, you know. Makes me feel comfortable that way. So, yeah, so we want to, of course, I prayed with them Sunday, but uh, we want to pray for them, right? Because no barriers to the future. And we want to just let the Holy Spirit flow out of us 
towards them and for their spirit to be released and together we find a place of communion in the Holy Spirit right now that God's sanctioning their future together and that uh, I, in fact the Holy Spirit speaking to me right now to tell you that when you say your wedding vows that day that three people are standing there the two of you and Jesus and that he's going to be your partner through life and that uh, He's going to put things together in such a way but that he will be there to sanction the marriage himself and that uh, you'll have a life together with God. Lord, we're praying that transition is smooth, that as they move into the future together, that they too shall become one. And, Father, that they will be one in the Spirit and one flesh before God. So we put our hands over them, Father God, that there is that covering from the Lord and the Lord says, I'll go before you and I'm going to make the crooked way straight, rough to be made smooth, and every mountain to be made low and every valley to be filled, that I'm leveling the field out before you and that I have a future for you. It's one for good and not for evil to give you a hope and to give you a future. And that the past is not discounted, it actually is orchestrating your next step. That your upbringings individually will actually be syncretized together as one to make a greater contribution than you could make individually. You shall see the salvation of the Lord. You shall see the glory and the presence of God. So Father, we commend this couple unto you as they uh, in April, they share their vows one to another that your blessing will settle upon them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, thank you. Thank you all. And uh, welcome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Man, don't, I kind of appreciate Tundi doing that. I mean, how many people know they come up in front of the church and talk to them and uh, probably because they're afraid, no, no, you're not going to do that, you know, but we would never do that, would we? Uh, could we open our hearts up to the Lord for a second? Maybe if there's a song in your heart, maybe you just lift it to the Lord. The Lord says there's been a few barriers in, uh, for some people. And they were not barriers that he put there. They were lies of the enemy. And they became limiting. But tonight, through this simple posture with God, those barriers are just invisible. They go away. They're not there because of the work of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, as we praise you and worship you, we pray that the Holy Spirit does his work in all of our lives right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Would you just lift this up with me? I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We're going to sing it again, but I heard the Lord say, You've been dry, and he's given you a drink right now. Let his spirit just give you the drink. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, 
Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. I want to sing it one more time. But I also want you to move out with your gift. If God has a word, I want you to share it. If he shows you something, I want to just give a moment to let you share. All right? I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ears. I do want to sing it one more time, but I want to sing it this way. There's turmoil in the nation. I want there to be a beacon of light to God in worship right here. In the midst of the turmoil of this world, that the praise of God goes up unhindered, unrelentingly, so the Holy Spirit can do the work that needs to be done. I have no trust in men. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's, let's, let's take it to the Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ears, oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your with all your heart to the Lord. Oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Visita la cabria no la tima. Vende la rea toronda la de. Una cae torrojo sotto la vache. Berra manane anda la queria de anda la de. Moriata caso na la yashila mande. Mondalaratai recotoso la ramorian de berim vene la rotola vosi la catam e malaranam ishil alco. Lord, we sing our praise and our worship over our nation tonight. Let the Holy Spirit do what only He can do. Tear down the barriers, Lord. You're the barrier terror. You tear those down. God, they're being raised. They're being raised, God. But you make ways where there seems to be no way. Rimano 
Mosatalakam, Bariatalakam, Iriandalavoko. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Undere miriandole ki andola, andola rea satanakam. Ira makapuru makapala me andola nanake. Endere ki tiara katana nese, mlava mokomo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sotoran. Hallelujah. Just let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone have anything from the Lord you want to share? Yeah, come ahead, Joy. Come on. Sure. No soldier entangles himself in the things of the Lord. Wow. My opinion is not that. Yeah. It falls in the things of the Lord. That's good. No soldier of the kingdom entangles himself in the things of this world. It's very important. It's very important because there's a worldly mindset. We cannot get entangled. That's not how we fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, which, by the way, Jesus has already made a show of openly and conquered them. So the barrier's there. We've got to make sure that we're glorifying God. Anybody else? Anything that the Lord is saying to you that would be all right? doesn't matter. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace. Lord, your word says there's a peace that passes our understanding. When we just don't understand it, you still give a peace. There's an old song we used to sing years ago. It went, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love. Fathomless. Everybody understand? Peace. <laughs> you can't find the bottom of this. You can't find the top of it. It's fathom. It's fathom. But I just, I just, I think that if we stay in that place of worship in a perspective of God, that he continually blows our minds and goes beyond, and we, we understand that we've been given the grace of a relationship with someone that can go so much further than we can go, and he wants us to go with him. It's, it's an incredible, incredible type situation of what he's given us. Ephraim, you got something? Okay. He's going to give us a song. And then come on, Tunde. As you're getting ready to go, Tunde's going to share what he has. Um, as Pastor was, just before Pastor said what he said, the Lord was speaking to my heart um, to let you know that it's peace he gives to us, not as the world give it. Right. And that was what he was saying to my heart. And I was hesitating that, okay, um, and just as I was hesitating, Pastor just said, peace. 
he just said it out, peace. That was the next thing he said. He just said peace. And the Lord said to say to you that um, it's going to be a year of upheavals. Upheavals. You know, troubles. Um, new things that are strange. And I think I saw the first today. I've been in the U.S. for over a decade now. I've been part of a few elections. And I haven't seen anyone like this one. But I was not surprised, even though I was in my heart feeling summer when I saw some things on Fox News today. Um, but the Lord says peace. And more is going to come. Not just in America, but around the world. Even with COVID, a couple of things are going to be introduced. But you as a child of God, myself as a child of God, God says, keep your peace because God already gave that, gave that to you. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world give it. Let Amen. not your hearts be troubled. Peace. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. God bless you. Again. It's a confirmation to my heart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do you have a song or do you just, okay, go ahead. Anybody else while he's getting something that you felt like the Lord wanted to say? Yeah, when the okay. pastor uh, mentioned about peace, uh, God put this song in my heart, so I'm going to sing this song. When peace like a river attended my soul, when sorrows like these below so sing together it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well it is well with my Anybody else? I want to give you a chance. Um, come on. Let's just let the Holy Spirit talk a little bit to us tonight. The Spirit of the Lord says. I no longer seek peace or try to substitute my presence with other things. I have called you, my sons and my daughters. I am your healer. I am your provider. I love you. This day I call you back to me. This day I call you 
back to sanctification. I call you back to restoration. I call you back because I love you that much. No longer feel that the things of this world, they could consume you. Don't be consumed by them. Yet be consumed by me, thus says the Lord your God. I am here. Receive new breath now. For I am with you now and forevermore. And yes, I will return. I will return for you. And all those that you bring to me. Never forget sons. Never forget daughters. That it's not just about you. It's about those you are called to reach. Says the Lord your God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As John's coming, let's ask the Lord to do the Lord. Consume us then. Talk to us. Show us. We're so delighted that we're your sons and your daughters. We could never have gotten there without you. And we're stunned. We're literally amazed that you would welcome us that way. So sanctify us. Set us apart. Get us in that place we need to be. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to elaborate a little bit on what you mentioned sure. about me earlier. Um, he mentioned about hitting a wall right. and being a runner. I have run two marathons. No, I haven't. I've run most of marathons. In both marathons I've run, I've hit the wall. And I hit the wall because I wasn't prepared. Mm. Wow. When you hit the wall, what that means is in, to, a, to an athlete, is your muscles have run out of glycogen to power your muscles. That is short-term energy supplied by sugar, carbohydrates. So when you're running fast, that's the energy your muscles need. When you're running slow for the long haul, your body gets used to that and you burn more fat, which takes longer to burn, and you don't hit the wall. So to run a marathon fast, you've got to load up on glycogen for one, and you've got to train to continue to do that so your body's ready for it. Mm. So the corollary in what we're talking about here is we're in this for the long haul. Amen. It's time to burn some fat. <laughs> yes. As we run this long race. There are times where we need to sprint as believers. Right. But... We need to be prepared and trained to sprint. And that takes some time. So don't expect to run into things unprepared and finish well. Yeah. Take the time. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time with um, us as fellow believers. Build yourself up so you can run the race when you need to run fast. And you can run slowly when you need to run slowly. Because we need to finish not first. We need to finish well. Well. And we will enter the kingdom. Really good. Yeah, really good. Thank you, John. Yeah. Come ahead. While he's coming, I just thought, you know, he said we need to burn that fat. And I, <laughs> God spoke to me in two ways. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, but, but here's the reality. Church has to change everybody because it's looked too much like an audience listened to a speaker. It's like, sitting on the couch, eating tater chips, and having it done towards you. And that's why I'm providing these little open spots like this for you to step out because this is part of the exercise. If we can't do it here, we won't do it out there. And so let's, let's take that word that John just said, a really good word. And, uh, you know, I'm going to... John's going to start a class called Glycogen in the Holy Spirit. So, amen. Amen. so go ahead, Israel. Amen. I felt the Lord saying, um, 
I am God, there is none like you. And, and I remember in Isaiah 46, 5, it says, To whom will you compare me and make me equal and compare, and compare me, that we may be alike? They pour gold out of a bag, and they weigh silver out of the measuring rod and hire a goldsmith, and he makes it a god, and they fall down. Yeah, they bow down. They carry it on the shoulder. They carry it and set it in its place, and it stands, and it shall not move from its place. Yes, one shall cry to it, yet cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this, and be a man. Return it on, return it on your heart, O sinners. Remember, former things from from forever. I am God, and no other is God, even one like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from the past things which were not done, saying, My purpose shall stand. I will do all my pleasure. And I really felt the Lord saying. I am God. There's no one like me. And as Brother Vondo said, that we need to be contrite. We need to have this contrite heart. And I feel the Lord calling us to this place where we can't trust in these kingdoms of men. In his kingdom, that's where we put our stock in. We don't put our stock in gold. We don't put our stock in idols. But we put our stock in his kingdom. Because that kingdom is going to last forever. That kingdom will not end. It Amen. will never end. Amen. Thank you. So I think the overall thing that the Lord is telling us tonight is that we cannot let the impositions of this world create a barrier for the kingdom of God. That the church has to continue on. That we can't uh, allow uh, the kingdoms of this world to dictate our thinking but only the kingdom of God. And uh, or we'll hit that wall. And I think the church hit the wall, honestly. And I think we're being forced now, because we hit the wall, to look at life differently. Because it, cause it might just not work the same way anymore. But God has a way. <laughs> and he makes a way where there seems to be no way. And so our hope is in the Lord. Amen. Josh, I'm so glad to see you. Man, I love that smile. That Pardon me. Joshua. Amen. Amen. Don't you call him Josh. You call him Joshua. That's his name. And so I, I remember the first time I met him, I called him Joshua. And he said, I like that. You called me by my name. He didn't call me Josh. So, But Josh is a term of endearment, by the way, because I have a nephew named Josh. So, you know, you all look nothing alike. But anyway, <laughs> I'm glad. you. I want us to pray for him. He had quite a battle. Is, is, did, did this get remedied for you? Are you still battling? What was it? A, some physical, was it a tooth or something? Okay. Yeah, well, I think it was two or three weeks ago, I think. Okay. doing okay okay praise God well I just want to check that because a, a bad tooth can be bad all the way around and I got a pair of needle nose pliers we could fix that right quick tonight so uh, okay I just wanted to check on you everybody doing good yeah the Lord's good to us isn't he amen well father thank you for a time tonight it was a little bit different but I'm glad to hear your voice working through your people. That it's more than what I have to say. But if we can all be doers of the word and start to do it, we get a big picture. Lord, I heard the word that came through Vondo. It was very clear about us putting you as our all in all and surrendering and being sanctified fresh and brand new that you got something that you want to bring, and that you call us sons and daughters. That's very key, Father, for us to, to understand that. I, I thank you for John's explanation of hitting the wall, God, uh, so that we can move past barriers and 
we find ourselves preparing ourselves so that we don't uh, get caught hitting the wall, but we've prepared well, and we've worked well, and we've spent time with you, and your spirit is empowering us so we have the right fuel source in our lives. I thank you for uh, the word that uh, you gave through Tundi about peace and the one through joy about how we're not supposed to entangle ourselves with this world if we're going to be a soldier of the faith. We thank you for a song of the Spirit, God. We thank you for what Israel shared. We thank you that you talk to us in different kinds of ways tonight. And we give you thanks for it, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Peace, everybody. God bless you. Amen. Thanks. Are you free on?